lived in Galway? Just about 32 years. I was in Dublin before that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I came down to Galway on a, a literary conference. Okay. But when I came to Galway, I mean, it declares itself a cultural capital now, but there was absolutely nothing here then. Not a single thing. It was as cultural as a, a rock on a beach. There was absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. um, and gradually I got involved with a few writers, produced a broadsheet of poetry and prose every week, and then in 1986 founded the Kirch International Festival. Um, naively, as I thought, as a poetry festival, I, people would be welcoming of it. Um, but then, of course, the artistic politics came into play after that, and uh, the rest is a quite typical but boring story. Mm -hmm. And I left it. Um, it's now a commercial festival, and, and so much of the arts now is commercial here in Galway. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's not what I had in mind, I think, when I came. The main problem with the availability of, of media space, mm -hmm. let's say, nowadays, for poets, is that everybody wants to declare his or herself a poet without thinking about what poetry is and whether it involves learning the practice, reading the practice, disappointment, elation, acceptance, rejection, all of these things. They don't want to go through any of that. Um, so they tend to go straight to a collection, or they say, well, I've published a poem on Facebook, therefore I'm a poet, mm -hmm. which is absolute nonsense. And if you declare that it's nonsense, then you're called an elitist. So there's this notion of populism. Everything has to be popular. And that doesn't necessarily make it good. There's an apprenticeship to be served in any of the arts. Yeah, yeah. There's an apprenticeship to be served if you want to be able to build a, a brick wall. Mm -hmm. um, but no one seems to think that, or very few people seem to think that. And as I say, if you declare that, then you're called elitist or old-fashioned, yeah. uh, or you're not keeping up with the times. In fact, we've gone to the point now where nobody can actually say or dare say what a real poem is and what isn't a real poem. As I went down to Huntley Town one morning far to fee, I met Bogey, a carney, and with him I did agree to work his two best horses, cart or barrow or plough. Well, yeah, I have a collection of poems, which is my ninth, which I've, I've just finished compiling and putting it together. I'm quite happy with it. Most of the poems have been published, nearly all of them have been published. Uh, I'm also working on a translation from the French of uh, the Tristan Isoud uh, story. And I want to try and attack that in a different kind of way. There is a prose version of it, of course. But I want to try and do it in, in rhyming couplets, if it's at all possible. Yeah. Then that'll take time and concentration and a, and a, and a bit of space. So I hope to have that as well. That'll take time. This was scarcely o'er, and this lassie lost her bloom. The red fell from her bonny cheeks, and her eyes began to swoon. And the next nine months was past and gone when she brought to me a son. And I was quickly sent for, for to see what could be done. I said that I would marry her, but all oh, that I would not do, saying you're no match. For my bunny bell and she's no match for you. And now she's married with a tinker lad that comes from.
from Huntley Town. He mans pots and pans and paraffin lamps, and he scours the country round. And maybe she's got the better match, all bogey can he tell. Farewell, ye lads, a Huntley side and bogey's bunny bell. The other girl predicted a change. It arrived with wind rising. A cough in the hedge, a click in the window that wasn't there yesterday or the day before. Like the small chest pain that grows and swells and smothers, these are the symptoms of bad weather. Moving in, growing, pushing, tightening the bright channels we ran in for weeks. Already you are shy, blood to your cheeks, the window disfigured by sly streaks of rain. Something is happening, happening again. Lock the door.